What's going on everybody? Welcome to Command and Consult. My name is Jason. Today we're looking at my very kind of just like tiny modest Xbox One slash Xbox Series collection. Uh, this collection is quite modest. I don't really buy games for uh, Xbox that often anymore. It's mostly like the previous consoles like 360, PS4, um, and uh, PS5 stuff now. So there's not really much in terms of games here. There is a bunch I've already spoken about, so I won't go in too much depth on the ones we've already spoke about in previous videos. So without further ado, let's get on to the stack. Gaming. Uh, the first game is Elix. I've spoken about this before. Uh, really, really cool um, open world RPG. Very difficult, brutal, uh, Difficulty spikes if you don't spec out your character in a specific way. The early game can be a bit daunting, but I feel like it's a pretty decent RPG if you're looking for a really old school hardcore experience. That's Elix. Immortal Unchained. I'm going through this bit of a phase at the moment of these kind of Dark Souls, Souls like S games, and I'm trying to get the uh, just collect some of them really and try them out because I do love this kind of almost kind of a sub genre of a genre. Uh, very, very cool. The Souls like um, games and, and the kind of mechanics involved really like that. So that's Immortal Unchained, looks pretty cool. Kind of this, like cybernetic, kind of cyberpunk, kind of dark game uh, with tech and you use guns to fight enemies. It looks like you're staying in Souls like a fair, but uh, a bit different. Looks all right, that's Immortal Unchained. Another Souls-like for the collection, Dolmen. Again, it looks kind of similar to Immortal Unchained, where it's very sci-fi-esque, very kind of cyber, cybernetic looking, uh, and you use guns to uh, to fight shit, and it looks pretty good. That's Dolmen. The final game that we spoke about before in recent in recent videos is uh, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion. This is a remake of Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core on the PSP. I adore that game. It's one of my favorite PSP games of all time. So uh, I had to pick up the remake of that. I've not played this yet. I do have a bunch of Final Fantasy games that I have not got around to playing yet, but uh, it's just building that backlog of Final Fantasy titles. Uh, it's got the awesome um, action combat that I've, I've liked recently from Final Fantasy. But yeah, looking forward to checking this one out when I get a chance. That's Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion. So now we're moving over to my recent pickups for the collection uh, and you can gauge after seeing this how small the rest of the collection is. I barely, like I said, I barely buy Xbox One or Xbox Series games anymore, especially with the advent of Game Pass. I've got Game Pass, so a lot of games are on there that I want to play. I'm not, a, I'm not too bothered about buying the physicals because with, with the Xbox, unfortunately, I feel like the discs are mostly there to unlock the game rather than actually having the game on the disc, unfortunately. By the way, these are my recent pickups of games that are not on Game Pass that I wanted physically. Gaming. Uh, first up is another Souls-like game, Scars Above. This sounds like it might be pretty decent. Uh, it's a deep space, deep sci-fi game where you're the scientist and you're trying to basically uh, investigate this planet and, f and find things to basically repair yourself or repair your ship and actually uh, do some scientific stuff for once in a game. But from what I've seen from the actual gameplay, the actual combat is very Souls-like. So looking forward to checking this one out. This was dirt cheap as well as CEX, like £6. So I'm looking forward to that. Scars above. Next up is a game called Dynasty Warriors 9. Uh, I've heard terrible things about this game. This game, I remember this game came out and it was absolutely just terribly just ragged on by every critic you can imagine. But it always looked pretty fun to me. So I thought I had some credit. Why not grab it? Um, looks pretty good. I'm quite happy to have it in the collection. So yeah, that's Dynasty Warriors 9. I love these just these mindless kind of just horde, kill the horde kind of games. Um, you can switch your brain off, you don't have to really worry about it, and you can just like spam square until everyone's dead. That's Dynasty Warriors 9. Uh, next up is a game I picked up pretty much yesterday. Uh, I found this in a charity shop for 50p. Uh, Rare Replay. Again, it's not really a game on disc that really means anything for Xbox because I can just download it uh, through Games Pass. Um, but I feel like this is quite a um, 
a celebration of, of, of a developer's history in a way. So it's nice to have this physically in the collection as, as a memento for, for Rare and, and, and the developer and all its classic games on there that I thought 50p, I'm just gonna pick it up and have it in the collection. That's Rare Replay. Next up is another game I picked up uh, yesterday as well, um, Dungeons and Dragons A Dark Alliance. Uh, I remember this game came out originally, it was just met with really bad reviews, really poor reviews. Uh, apparently the connectivity issues were bad and uh, the game is kind of lackluster in its um, combat and, and uh, RPG mechanics and it's basically just general progression. Uh, but it looks like my cup of tea. It's got that kind of level. Of, there's games that have level, that level of jank that I'm like, I'm kind of interested in that. You know, I'm, 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 I'm more forgiving than most for terrible games. And um, if there's a, if there, even if there's like a sliver of a, of something fun there, then I probably will get more out of this than most. That's Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance. The final game in the new editions uh, set. This is the section of this video. Is a game called The Charm. Now this is a survival horror game that has like that has light crafting mechanics, which sounds pretty interesting to me. The cool thing about this purchase in general is that it was only eight pound brand new in game. So if you've got a game store anywhere near you, consolidated in Sports Direct or not, hunt this game out. You might find it for really cheap. Eight quid this was, brand new, and it is brand new because it's uh, all sealedy, sealedy, buildy. But yeah, that's the charm. Looks like a really cool, uh, weird kind of. I don't know if I want to say like cosmic horror. Uh, it does have that vibe to it on the back. I'm just looking at it now. It does have that kind of cosmic horror vibe. Survival horror. It looks cool. I love my horror games. So that's the chant. Right now we're moving on to the rest of the collection. And the rest of the collection is kind of random really. There is a series of games here that I absolutely love. And I think they're criminally overlooked in my opinion. But we're just going to start from the top of the pack. Gaming. So we've got Far Cry 4. I don't know why I got this. I don't know why I have this to be honest. Because I've got it for PS4. So... Um, and it is the North American version. So um, yeah, I don't know why I've got this, but um, I think it's I think it should be in my brother's collection, and he couldn't trade it because it's the North American version. So he uh, just gave it to me. Uh, so I've got this for no reason. So if anybody wants this, if anyone would like this, I'll drop my Instagram in in, in the description. Uh, if anyone would like this, uh, drop me a message. First come, first serve with your address and I will just send it to you. Uh, it does play on Xbox because the discs are just region free. It's just that it is the North American uh, version. Let me know, I'm willing to give this away because I've already got it. So let me know guys, that's Far Cry 4. This game uh, is probably the most dead game in existence now really, um, unless you want to play with against bots uh, in, in solo. Uh, Battleborn, this game um, criminally um, underappreciated when it came out absolutely demolished by overwatch when it came out it came out maybe like two weeks before overwatch and overwatch came out and just dominated this kind of genre this kind of um, arena hero shooter kind of style this game was a bit different in its multiplayer it was more like a like a moba um, but I, I i mostly played it um did its single player missions that i really enjoyed i thought it was had a really fun gunplay really fun missions, different variety of, of objectives. It was a fun hero shooter, and I think it was just given the, you know, the, the wrong end of the stick when it concerns, like, its success. It was absolutely just beaten down. It was the equivalent of, like, you know, the Sega Saturn versus the PlayStation. The PlayStation came out and just absolutely just, just basically stomped it into oblivion, and that's what Overwatch did to Battleborn. Overwatch came out two weeks after the fact and was just like, yeah, we're done with you, just stomped you into the ground. It's a shame because this game was much better than what people would have thought it was. It was very, very good, and I highly recommend. If you can pick this up for dirt cheap, I think you can get it for like, probably as cheap as 50p now. If you can hunt this down for 50p and just play those single player solo missions, I think you could have a bit of fun. That's Battleborn. Next up is a series of games that I absolutely adore. I think it's one of the most overlooked and underappreciated you know, franchises of video games ever. And the games are so unique in the series as well. I'm talking about Darksiders. Darksiders um, basically centers around the fantastical storytelling of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. See, so, yeah, in this in this series, uh, it's, it's set, this series is centered on the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. And in this series, you've got war, death, fury, and strife. And the cool thing about this series, in my opinion, is each game 
There's four games in this franchise. They center around a particular horseman. So the first game here, Darksiders, centers around war. And um, he has basically been wrongfully uh, accused of bringing up the apocalypse on purpose. So he has to find a way to prove his innocence and that he's only answering the call. When the call happens, he answers it and something's amiss. It's a conspiracy uh, abound there uh, when it concerns the gods and stuff. So Darksiders 1 is, is, is a very, very cool game in that it, it plays more like a, a God of War-esque kind of action hack and slash game, but it has lots of Legend of Zelda kind of cool elements to it. It's a very cool amalgamation of different kind of styles of games and I really do appreciate that for it and uh it's great it looks great the art direction is fantastic as well and yeah i really recommend this game that's dark siders continuing the dark siders kick we've got dark siders 2 again it f carries on that idea of the four horsemen of the apocalypse but this time you're playing as death and uh, the story centers around your story runs parallel to war story but that you're also trying to figure out um what's happened about you know being what's happening with your brother war and try to figure out you know how you can basically uh clear his name for his wrong for his quote unquote wrongdoing but yeah this game really up the ante uh with with a uh, with the, with the gameplay. Darksiders 1 was more slow and plodding and more about, you know, platforming and exploration. This game doubles down on that exploration part, but goes full in on the RPG elements and goes full in with the actual action combat. This game is more akin to Devil May Cry in its combat and it's just absolutely furious and it's a complete loot, loot game as well. Like if you like collecting loot and gearing out your character to make him look awesome and be overpowered as fuck i think you're going to enjoy dark side is 2 dark side is 2 might be the best out of the bunch it's so so good it's so satisfying and uh, death as a character he's a he's a bona fide badass that's dark side is 2 carrying on with the dark side is love dark side is 3 um this might be the uh most misunderstood game out of the series in my opinion because i think this is a really fun uh you know diversion from the from 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 the game styles of the first two games so the first two games were more kind of zelda like rpg kind of um action you know, action games like in devil may cry and god of wars this goes more into the souls like territory uh, and it does it really well i think I th like i said the art direction in these games from one to to four all look great. I love the, the design language in these games. I love the style and it's like it's, it's depictions of heaven and hell and the characters within them. It's awesome. And this game is no exception. It looks great. Uh, I think it plays really well as a souls like in the in as a souls like it works really well. And you're playing as Fury in this game. He's on a quest to hunt down the sev seven deadly sins. Uh, yeah, it's really really fun. Probably the most overlooked one out of the bunch, in my opinion. And no one really talks favourably about Dark Souls 3, but I think it's really underrated. And I think it's one, if you like your Souls like formula, I think this one is really, really good. That's Dark Souls 3. Brings us to the last Dark Souls game, Dark Souls Genesis. Now, this game, it plays differently completely again. So, this one's a over the top, you know, you know, over the top perspective action RPG akin to Diablo. But. The really cool fast-paced action combat of the first two uh, Dark Souls games are retained, so it feels like it's more more of a um, like almost like a twin-stick shooter, but like really from, you know frantic action. In this one, you play as Strife. Um, it takes place before the first game, so it's a prequel. If you like your um, top-down, almost like isometric RPGs, I think you'd be right at home with this one. Um, it's just really fun. All these games are fun, man. This is one of the most underrated and underappreciated series of games, in my opinion. That's Dark Souls Genesis. Next up, um, another great kind of RPG-esque series that I think is just stellar. Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. Uh, this game takes the best elements from the Batman Arkham series and Assassin's Creed and brings it into the Lord of the Rings franchise and gives us one of the best games of the decade, in my opinion. This game is so much fun. The Nemesis system has been spoken about ad nauseum about how it really create, allows you to create your own story within the game and you can build up your own rivalries with these orcs who are always ascending to the next level if they kill you and they remember you and they are all about making you suffer if they see you again uh yeah awesome game awesome gameplay uh and uh yeah it's it's a landmark game in terms of like we've never seen anything like the nemesis system ever again uh it was i think it was patented patented by warner brothers 
which is a bit of a fucking dick move in my opinion but that's that's his life i guess uh shadow of mordor is great moving on from shadow of mordor we've got its sequel shadow of war which i've not played yet so i can't really comment on this that much uh, it's just in my collection uh i do want to play it they have patched it over the years and take it stripped out all the microtransactions and all the grindy crap that they put in there to make you spend in the real spend real money in their shop uh, a lot of controversy when this came out about that but that's all gone now and hopefully it is a bit of a more kind of straight streamlined and straight up affair where you can just like you know go from a to b and 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 finish the game without spending real money and i think there was a thing of like the grind at the end of the game was un unwieldy because the game was pushing you towards that real money shop to basically give you an advantage to finish the game hopefully that's all gone now and hopefully uh, it's a bit easier to finish the game that's shadow of war next up is uh my favorite looter shooter of all time borderlands 3 uh i used i i, I kind of kind of like the borderlands games back in the day i thought one and two were fine they're pretty good never played the pre-sequel so i can't comment on that but um uh, I kind of got into more into the looter shooter genre of the games like games such as like Destiny or Destiny 2. Uh, not the best games in my opinion, uh, but when this came out, it proved that Borderlands was like the quintessential looter shooter. This game is so addictive. The shooting is super satisfying. Uh, the loot is plentiful, and you're just gonna just be addictive. It's, it's one of those addictive games where it's like you know I'm just gonna jump in and just kill shit, get loads of loot, get new guns, and just be an absolute badass. Uh, it's awesome. I love it. That's Borderlands 3. And the final game. It's quite um, it's, it's quite good that this is the last game. Uh, Assassin's Creed Unity. Uh, I brought up in one of my videos that this might be one of the best games in the series. Um, sure, it came out and it was a bucky mess. Broken. Didn't work. The Some of the assets were just absolutely ripped to pieces. It wasn't, wasn't good. Um, but years of fixes have made this game one of the best in the series for me. Um, its presentation of Paris is beautiful and unbelievably gorgeous. And I feel like this is a great Assassin's Creed game. Uh, it's just really, really good. I love exploring Paris. I love getting into fights. I love, you know, pushing on the story here as well. A really, really fun game. Underrated. Underrated in a way that, yeah, sure, at the time, maybe it deserved the bad reviews for being a broken piece of shit. But... In 2024, it's worth going back to because it's really good. That's Assassin's Creed Unity. So that is it, guys. That is my complete Xbox One and Xbox Series collection. Like I said, you probably wasn't expecting it to be this modest, this you know small in comparison to my other collections. Um, but I think uh, I quite like it being kind of like controlled and focused and not really gone mad with it. And with Game Pass, it's hard to um, want to buy physical for the xbox uh, one for me uh, because i'm um, it's not my go-to system really I'm, I'm more for going for that you know ps5 at the moment and playing like ps4 backwards compatible and stuff like that and the xbox one does have some cool things of like there's a lot of games on 360 that are backwards compatible that i can play which is always fun right it's always fun to go back to those games and play them um but to have these physically is not a necessity for me but these are just hand-picked titles that are not on Game Pass at the moment that I do like. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't know. This, this, I don't know if you were expecting more games in this video, but that is my Xbox One collection. Let me know in the comments down below what are your favourite games on Xbox One or Series X. And as always, let's continue to build the games collection.